Okay, in this video I'm going to start working on some uh, BC calculus sample questions. And this is going to be question uh, one and two. So, the first problem here, it says, <clears throat> what is the slope of the line tangent to the curve x squared plus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 2 when y equals 1? Well, they're asking about tangent lines, <clears throat> so we know that we're going to have to find the derivative. Remember in this case that we're going to have to use implicit differentiation as well. So when we take the derivative, the derivative uh, with respect to x of x squared will just be 2x. Um, then we'll have to use the product rule on the inside part, the xy part. So maybe I'll put that in parentheses. So the derivative of x is 1. We'll leave the y alone. Plus, now we'll leave the x alone. And the derivative of y is 1 uh, y prime, or dy dx. I prefer the dy dx notation myself. Um, the derivative of the 3y squared will get 6y. We have to tack on our dy dx. And then if we take the derivative of the right side, we'll simply get 0. So what we're going to do at this point is just solve for dy dx. So we have 2x plus 2y plus 2x dy dx plus 6y dy dx equals 0. And notice if we subtract, we could actually factor a 2 out of everything. There's a 2, 2, 2, and a 6. So if we divide each side by 2, um, I'll get rid of the coefficients. If you divide 6 by 2, we get 3. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract my x, and I'm going to subtract my y. And notice left over, um, what I would have left on the, the left side now would be my x dy dx plus 3y dy dx. Um, so I can factor the dy dx out, have the x plus 3y left over, and then simply divide by that. So now I know that dy dx is going to be negative x minus y divided by x plus 3y. Okay, so I was hoping somehow, you know, and well, I guess it's possible, um, you know, that the derivative only involved the y coordinate. So then we would just plug in y equals 1. But the problem is we need the x coordinate as well. Well, how do we get the x coordinate? Well, we have the equation of, our, of the curve. So notice if we simply plug back in that y equals 1, we'll be able to solve for x. So let me erase the stuff in the middle. We don't really need that anymore. All I really need now is my derivative. So if we substitute in, um, if we plug in y equals 0, excuse me, I keep saying 0, I think. If we plug in y equals 1, we'll get x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 2. Well, just this is just a quadratic, subtract 2 from both sides. We'll get x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Well, this factors as x plus 1 x plus 1 equals 0. So we know that when y equals 1, well, if we solve this, we'll simply get that x equals negative 1. Okay, so now I have the two values I need, and all we'll have to do is simply plug those into our derivative formula, be careful with the arithmetic, and then we'll be good to go. So it says the derivative dy dx evaluated at this point negative 1 comma 1 so again I'm just plugging negative 1 in everywhere I have an X positive 1 in everywhere I have a Y I'll get negative negative 1 or positive 1 minus 1 well who really cares what we get on the bottom but I guess we'll get negative 1 plus 3 we're getting 0 on the top and that means that our derivative um, is simply gonna have value 0 so That'll be the answer for problem number one. That tangent, the slope of the tangent line at that point would be zero. The next problem um, on this practice test is the following. It's an integral. And they want you to integrate from negative one to positive one of x e to the x squared dx. Um, and I can look at this right off the bat and tell you that that's going to be zero without much work. Um, and remember the idea is if you have an odd function, so again an odd function means f of negative x equals negative f of x, 
The thing that sticks out to me is the symmetric interval. It goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Likewise, if it went from negative 10 to positive 10, etc. If you integrate an odd function over a symmetric interval, um, what's going to happen is the kind of the bottom part is going to cancel out with the top part and the value of the resulting integral. So if you integrate over an odd function, it says the resulting integral is always going to equal zero if you're integrating over a symmetric interval. So let me just remind you of that. Well, it's easy to show that x e to the x squared is in fact an odd function because if we let f of x be our function, x e to the x squared, well, f of negative x is negative x e to the negative x squared. Well, hey, that's simply negative x e to the x squared once we uh, square it out. And that is, of course, the negative of what we started with. So we do have an odd function over a symmetric, inter symmetric interval, so we know that its value is 0. Um, you could do a u substitution, let u equal x squared, go through it that way, um, and you would get the same answer. So. Um, all right, I hope these two help. I'm going to do some more. Feel free to post comments and questions, and hopefully me or somebody else can help you.